Estamos eh, optimizando recursos. Estamos optimizando recursos. Optimizando recursos. ¿Ya? Sí. Good morning. Rainy morning we have today. I have a theory that it never rains in Granada, but just today, the day that it shouldn't rain, it has rain. And that's a slight obstacle. It's going to have consequences because uh, it's going to affect our coffee break and our lunch. But we're going to open our seminar, Translation Nowadays and Beyond Technological Challenges and Diversification in an Ever-Evolving Profession. And here uh, on the panel, I have people who are probably known to most of you. On my right, Pilar Leon, who is the coordinator of the Masters in Professional Translation at the University of Granada. On my left, Jose Luis Vega, who's head of Spanish language department of DG Translation of the European Commission. On my right, Mercedes García de Quesada, who is the head of the translation and interpreting department, the University of Granada. And again, on my left, Luis González, who is coordinator of uh, the um, trans DG Translation in Madrid. In this order that I have just indicated i'm going to give the floor to pilar first for our inauguration thank you very much enrique first of all i apologize for the slight delay in starting i'll be brief we've had one or two technical problems the uh, event is in the framework of translating your workshops which is a series of events funded by DG Translation. We have the fortune to organize here in the University of Granada, organized by the uh, Masters in Professional Translation. We are holding this because the Masters forms part of the European Masters in Translation Network, again, which is organized by the EU and Jose Luis um vega asked me to organize it i tried to say no but he wouldn't let me wriggle out of it so we form we formed part of the network since 2019 because of the pandemic we hadn't organized one of these workshops up to now which is a possibility offered by the uh, commission so it's a great pleasure to be here the members of the emt network the more than 70 universities are committed to quality training and their mission is to reflect on the development of the profession and share best practices and in this sense the aim of this seminar is to reflect on the future of the profession the need to adapt to new uh, age with many changes we've tried to cover all the specialities in the masters with um, four round tables with prestigious speakers we have representatives of the industry of the academic world and of the institutions in order to give different perspectives different angles and as complete as possible and i'm sure it's going to be very enriching for everybody and finally, I'd like to thank all those people who've made it possible. The speakers who immediately said they would um, make um, a time to be here in the difficult uh, and uh, complicated agenda, the interpreters, the technique, the technician, Jose Luis, Mercedes and Enrique, who've also supported me all the time, and the Academic Commission of the masters particularly anna gregorio who is the secretary of the master's degree and particularly i would like to thank all those who are here here in the hall and also the uh, people who are listening online there are quite a lot 
I would encourage you to ask questions in the debates after each uh, round table. That's the idea that we should debate and the joint uh, reflections, especially for the students. It, this has been organized for you, so don't be shy. Um, ask the questions that you wish to ask. Also, if anybody wants to listen to the interpretation, the headsets are at the end of the room. We hope that the interpreting is going to go well because there are some technical problems that may affect the interpreters. I would like to thank you for being here and pass the floor to Luis González. Thank you very much, Pilar. Thank you very much, Pilar, for agreeing to organize this. I'm going to be brief. Uh, Jose Luis is going to talk about the overall vision of this program of seminars that we've been organizing since 2014. I'm going to focus on what one of our um, uh, translation offices uh, do in, in Spain. We have two translation offices linked to the Commission, one in Madrid, one in Barcelona, uh, which in Barcelona, they uh, do almost 100% translations into Catalan. Uh, that's a Spanish exception. I would just like to encourage you all to participate as much as possible you in these seminars most of them you can do online you can see they're on the commission's page many of them are already there they're uh, very interesting debates that you can see online we're interested in facilitating communication with the academic world with the industry and institutional translation whatever your profession may be this is a wide range obviously for language professionals but institutional translation is a collective effort and working together um, is promoted by working in a network by working together with other colleagues etc we have an example in fact uh, of this kind of connection that's been going on for the last 30 years and you have it on you can see in on the, the tables punto y coma which is the spanish uh, trans eu translation um, publication it has actually been very useful and has managed to survive over the last 30 years uh, it's useful for students and for professional translators and trainers and it's an exchange forum and finally we were here a month ago in the same room presenting an exhibition that you, you can visit in the uh, rectorate building in the royal hospital that we have put together with the help of experts in translation history in spain it's uh, about the contribution of translation to the circulation of ideas in Europe. And it's going to be in the um, rectorate until the 27th of October. So only a few days left, but I would encourage you to go and see it. There are panels here that develop all the questions that we as professional translators are interested in. So that's all from me. Please participate. The particip participation in, um, in the professional networks will further your professional future. Thank you. Now we we'll give the floor to Mercedes García de Quesada, who is the head of the Translation Interpreting Department. Thank you very much, Enrique, students, colleagues. Uh, colleagues who are sharing this table with me. It's for the department. It's, I'm proud to participate in this inauguration. It's the first of its kind, of the, the events of its kind in the University of Granada. Last night, talking to Celia Rique, Enrico from the Complutense University in Madrid, many years and years ago, uh, we, when we were studying, we were asked to fill out uh, record cards with terms on 
for our legal translation subject and we kept these cards in record card boxes we separated them alphabetically with uh, colored cards that were a bit thicker we uh, used our best writing and our best intentions and makes me um, feel old to say this this was 25 30 years ago over the last 25 30 years i don't know whether the changes in our profession have been greater or more numerous than those that were experienced in uh, longer periods for example since the beginning of institutional translation or translation as a human activity changes have probably always taken place over the years but i think what we can state is that the changes over the last 25 30 years have um, accelerated and this places us in a context that may be diffi difficult it's a, a challenge but it is absolutely um very very interesting we're at a time in our profession in which we're being asked to uh, adapt urgently and rapidly but adequately to be able to overcome the challenges of the future this flexibility this adaptation requires cooperation and i think this uh, event is a perfect example of that i don't think there are many forums in which the academic world teachers researchers professionals and the institutions come together to debate, reflect, argue even, and share their knowledge and their experience. I think it's a unique forum. It's an excellent opportunity for you as students, and I'm going to address the students particularly here can really take advantage of this here at the University of Granada today. I'd like to end by thanking the coordination of the <clears throat> master's program in professional translation, the DG translation of the European Commission and everybody, our interpreters, everybody who's made it possible for us to be here today. I would like to invite you to participate and if you can please go and see the exhibition that luis gonzalez mentioned and let us learn and take full advantage of this event thank you very much now we give the floor to jose luis vega thank you very much good morning uh, to everybody here in the room and to all those people who are following us online. I obviously want to thank, but start by thanking Enrique and Mercedes and particularly Pilar and her team for all, all co-organizing this event with us. I think that's one of the best things about this kind of initiative. It's a joint initiative on this case between the European Commission and the University of Granada. So thank you very much for accepting the organization of this event with us. <clears throat> As has been ported, pointed out, it's part of the um, translation Europe process. Linking up with what Mercedes said, um, I was here 40 years ago, I'm from Granada, and I studied here in this faculty in the University of Granada, and, um, uh, and I remember the record cards, the terminology cards, before you, Mercedes, they go back even, my um, memory goes back even further, so I'm going to speak on behalf of all the departments of all the representatives of the Spanish departments who are going to participate, Miriam, Blanca, etc. It's a great pleasure to participate here in the University of Granada, which, as has been said, it forms part of the EMT network. I'm sure you all know that belonging to this network is um, a seal of quality. It's an acknowledgement of the quality of the master's programs that form part of that network that is uh, given 
by the DG Translation in cooperation with prestigious translation experts from all over Europe. They evaluate the quality of the masters that are members, whether they fulfill the quality requirements. We couldn't do this without them. And in the University of Granada, you go way beyond the criteria. The Professional Translation Masters Program here at the University of Granada joined the network uh, in 2019. The network renews every five years. But unfortunately, just after they joined, the pandemic started, and that, of course, explains that for the first years of Granada belonging to the network, we couldn't really organize any cooperation projects. So we're delighted to um, be here for the second time in five weeks. Um, first for the exhibition that Luis mentioned a moment ago, and now we're delighted delighted to be here for this event. I'm going to briefly explain, because I think um, it's already been said by Pilar and other colleagues, that uh, just to contextualize the Translating Europe initiative, which is the framework for workshops like this one. DG Translation of the European Commission launched the project in 2014. Luis <clears throat> reminded me before that our department, the Spanish uh, department of DGT. It's the, of course, DGT, which uh, in is the <coughs> DG translation, not uh, the DG of traffic, which it is in Spain. But anyway, in 2005, we organized an event on terminology and uh, institutional translation inviting most uh, universities in Spain to participate. It's very similar to the event we have today. Translating Europe wishes to promote dialogue between the different agents in the translation world, promoting best practices, promoting collaborative projects, and contributing to the consolidation of uh, a diversified market for translation professionals all over Europe. This initiative um, is also, also uh, responsible for organizing an annual conference, Translating Europe Forum. <laughs> and in that forum, the topics that are going to be dealt with in the different uh, um, workshops are decided. To give you an idea, last year there were 50 workshops organized throughout the EU with very different formats. Some were real workshops, others were conferences, a bit like today's event. So all kinds of formats are acceptable. The Translating Europe Forum this year, the annual conference, which is always held in Brussels, will be held between the 8th and the 10th of November, and it's open to online participation. So I would invite you, both trainers and students, but especially the students, to <clears throat> register. There is still time. Just uh, Google it, Translation Forum, Europe Forum 2023, and you can register. It's a very ambitious program, very exhaustive. Um, but this conference has be, probably become the most ambitious event in Europe on very practical aspects of the practice of the translation profession, and there are people here who can confirm that. So I would very much uh, encourage you to uh, register for it. There are parallel activities as well. I'm sure it's going to give you a lot of ideas for your professional future. So going back to today's event, I hope that the presentations at the different round tables and the debate with the audience, and I hope it's going to be very intense. We will see the emergence of a vision, a hopeful vision 
uh, with regard to the technological challenges and diversification of the uh, profession um, <clears throat> become clearer and it becomes clear that they are opportunities for people who know how to adapt to the changes that are occurring and transforming our profession. They are transforming our profession as is occurring with many other professions that require a high level of specialization and that make uh, intensive use of technology. So that's all for me. Thank you very much for being here. <coughs> Thank you very much to all the participants in this inaugural session. I'm going to end by sharing some thoughts about what this initiative means for our faculty and for the translation and interpreting professions. I think that this is an extremely relevant workshop for obvious reasons. And uh, since we are remembering it, issues linked to the training and uh, practice of the profession, I'm also going to participate. I started uh, this degree in 1987 and in this room with a similar audience to this, a uh, <clears throat> well-loved colleague, colleague of mine, Roberto Mayoral, together with a speaker whose name I can't remember now, said the following, he said, there's a machine that has appeared called a computer. And you're going to be able to translate with this. I was only here for two years. Then I finished my degree in Russia. But everything was handed in. All our translations were handed in um, <coughs> on tracing paper that we had written on typewriters and uh, Roberto said if you want to make an investment and this is what I remember buy a mouse because the mouse will help you to move around the screen this room was quite different then it wasn't so modern it had a different kind of better um, <coughs> an old glamour that it doesn't have now and I remember that I left two years later and I never used that uh, machine. My parents bought one for the house so that we could see how it worked. Recently, I went to the conference of deans of arts and humanities. And yesterday, UNE the UNETI conference begins for the um, training institutions in translation and interpreting we have our own um, conference and we have a session on artificial intelligence in our field and everybody who put forward examples <coughs> were on translation and interpreting in most cases they were people from uh, language departments and they said that but, uh, technology was harassing us and when they offered those examples i said this is they didn't really know what they were talking about because this is a process which we could foresee this isn't new the use of computer tools we've been using translation memories for years trados trados for example and now uh, neural machine translation i don't i realized as a trainer that suddenly we saw tools that that had improved tremendously and this was a first step that was very important and then after that we had chat gpt this is something that definitively gives another dimension to technology in its uh, interaction with human beings. 
which was unprecedented to date. I th and there's an avalanche of articles, an average of two or three a month, about the possible disappearance of the profession or whether the profession, bearing in mind that it's spread a lot, because now there's more translation and more act interpreting activity than there was before, much more. <clears throat> there are questions about whether translators and interpreters will be necessary in the future. And that is linked to the title of this um, seminar, Beyond, Beyond, What is Beyond? Yes, so that gave me food for thought as well. And thinking about this, I thought maybe we, the beyond, the great beyond. And I think we're at an unprecedented moment in our history because we have to become stronger. And in this faculty and this important seminar, um, this will help us to become stronger in transfer. There are few professions that have such a strong influence on knowledge transfer, but <clears throat> very few uh, professions have this influence as ours do translation and interpreting. It's obvious you're all doing a master's on professional translation, but job profiles are evolving. Many of you will translate, in fact. But maybe you will interpret as well because employers are going to widen the scope of their interests with regard to you. I remind you that the employability in the undergraduate and postgraduate degrees in this faculty of, is very high, not only because you speak languages, because you know how to translate and interpret. You have those two components. Interpreting is much more complex. My colleague who is here in the Booth is an example of that, a magnificent interpreter, in fact, but it's oral. You don't have time to think. And employee, employers are going to start diversifying their profiles. And that's why I think that this initiative is going to be a privileged forum to reflect as never before on our professions and it's going to open new prospects about what is being done and what is going to happen in the field of translation in general terms and specifically at an institutional level and the institutions have a wide demand <coughs> there is demand in institutional translation and as well for institutional interpreting the Spanish booth in the EU is being renewed at the moment, so there are going to be openings in the future. So I'd like to thank everybody, first of all, the speakers who have come to participate. I would certainly like to thank Pilar Leon for the tremendous effort she has made to organize this, to uh, <coughs> Luis. Jose Luis Vega and Luis González, they always there. If all this is organized, it's because they constantly bear our faculty in mind, and not only us, all the faculties in Spain. And they cooperate with our Association of Training Institutions in Spain. Thank you for that cooperation as well, but they're always there. I would also like to thank the director of the translation and interpreting department because cooperation between the faculty and the department is essential to improve all our activities. So I would like to thank you for being here. Unfortunately, I'm going to miss part of it because tomorrow we start our meeting in Valencia and I have to go to Valencia at half past two, so I'm going to miss most of this event. Enjoy it and think. Remember, the translation and interpreting are always going to be necessary, but we have to find a niche in this evolving market and this evolving society. Thank you very much.